Can you hear me? Give me a heads up. <coughs> and let me know if you can see the slide. Excellent, great. Welcome everyone. Thanks for coming today. My name is Melissa Armo and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh and I started trading in 2008. It is now 2020. Oh gosh, that's hard to believe. So when I started trading in 2008, I thought I was going to figure out how to trade and make money in the market like that because I'm very smart and so I thought I'd figure it out in, you know, basically three to six months I was giving myself. So it's kind of funny because obviously that was totally wrong. <laughs> and it took me about three years to figure out how to successfully trade. So it was a long, long amount of time and a long process for me. And, um, you know, I, I would not want to have to repeat that period in my life. So I was very lucky that I stuck with it. And I think one of the things that I do credit myself for is sticking with one specific strategy. I've gotten very good at this and it's the only thing that I do. I trade gaps, we'll talk about that today, but a lot of people that I talk to, I would say 99.999% of the people that I've met in the trading world since I began and then even more people since I started the business and then even more people since I've been on TV. Most people do not stick with one strategy. So my, my stock switch tip of the day is stick with one strategy to become successful. Now that doesn't mean that you can't do other things at later points in life, but if you don't get really, 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 really good at one thing, why would you try something else? You know what I'm saying? But I think people uh, jump around because they don't see success with a particular strategy or system that they're using, so they find another one. So a lot of systems don't work, that's true, but you have to kind of follow your intuition and I'm very good at doing that. And your intuition will tell you, this isn't working because the strategy is not working and the strategy is not gonna work or this isn't working because of something I'm doing or whatever the case may be. And again, I'm here if you have questions, you can write them in the room and we're gonna get started here today. So we're gonna talk about making money trading in the volatile market and today's a great example of that, why? We dropped this morning, we opened lower Friday and Monday, and yet today we rallied and we almost made a new high. And we might make a new high tomorrow, actually, in the market. So 2020 is upon us, first full week of the year. <coughs> I had the trading room closed last week. It was a short week for the market. And I'm very focused <coughs> to start out the year, and you should be too. Uh, you should know exactly what results you want to achieve for this calendar year. And if you don't, it's not too late. You can sit down with a notebook after my lecture tonight and write it down. What do you, where do you see yourself in 12 months from now? Where do you see yourself December 31st, 2020? How much money do you want to make this year? If you were lost money in the market in 2019, what, is, what are you going to do differently? this year in 2020 to make money this year because if you don't do anything different then why could you possibly why would you think you would have any different results you wouldn't okay makes sense can everybody hear me so this is my email and my contact information you can email me at melissathestockswoosh.com if you have questions or if you would like a trial to my trading room this week I do offer a one-week trial to the room, and uh, I see some familiar faces. Some of you have done the trial. If you have never done a trial to the room, feel free to reach out. And if you've done several trials and haven't signed up, I guess the question you have to ask yourself is why. Um, I think people can figure out within one week of being in the room with me that if I know what I'm doing or not, and, and quite frankly, I do. Now, there are weeks that are more busier than others, that's true. There is some, uh, some things and some activity going on this week, okay? Now, it's not earnings season yet. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, too. But if you have questions, you can call me as well at 929-3200-GAP, okay? Thank you, Kathy. Kathy, can you put my email in the room, too? <clears throat> if you can do that, it would be helpful. So, are you ready, like I was saying, to go into 2020 strong, 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 have a strong year, make it a strong year for yourself, really go into the year 
whether it's today, if you started take trading today or tomorrow, okay, with, with, with a bang. And it's funny because the market really kind of did that today. Now, this is a chart of Amazon. I called calls, option, an options trade in Amazon last week. It was a trade that I called on the day the market and the stock gapped up here and rallied. Now, I thought this was a good exit here in this day. It was a positive trade. But Amazon continued today, again, with Google, which made new highs, and the market, which rallied too. And this was a very strong bar here and here. This is the one I call the trade in. So for people that don't know what I do, if you've never heard of me before, I'm looking for momentum. This was momentum here to the upside. This was momentum here. Again, we're looking at Amazon. This is a daily chart to the upside, okay? So I'm playing and looking at spotty momentum, but I'm doing it in gaps, okay? I play bullish gaps and bearish gaps. So this here was Amazon. The stock closed here, gapped up. So this was a bullish gap up and then it rallied. This was a Jimungo move for the stock on that day. In fact, it was over 60 points. It had the follow through here and then it had the follow through here today, okay? This stock is finally trying to make a move higher and this move here, this large aggressive bar here, was, which happened on a holiday week, actually this was the 27th, really helped the stock fly. This was a Friday, I think. Yeah, it was. So when you're getting into trading, and, and, and if you've never traded before, it's going to be a journey for you when you start to do it. If you have been trading and you haven't seen the success you desire, or if actually you've been failing, you have to look at this as a, every time that you're moving forward, you're taking a step forward. It's like five steps forward and two steps back. But I think people really, especially this time of the year, when people are making New Year's resolutions and they're thinking about things they want to achieve for 2020 for the new year, you have to, you still have to be honest with yourself. Because a lot of people are not making headway with their trading and losing money year over year and really not going up the ladder. They think that they are, but they aren't. And they think that they are because they may know more about the market or more about a chart than they did say 12 months ago or 24 months ago or five years ago. But if you are not making money, if you are not consistently making money, if you are not successful, then you're not making any headway on the stairs. Then you're, if you, you're not getting to the top, you've got to have that goal in mind and you have to be fixated almost on that goal if you want to achieve it, okay? I think too many people lose sight of the goal and you have to stay on top of it if you want to be successful. Trading is a skill, it is a skill set, but it's not necessarily about what is a moving average, okay, or what is a Fibonacci, which I don't use. It's, it's a skill where the skill is, and this is a skill that I've obtained over the years by, by doing gaps, which we're going to talk about in a minute, I predict the directional bias that something's going to go, any chart, any chart at all, could be an ETF, could be a stock like a company like Amazon. I predict the directional bias based on reading the price in the gap. And I do it in the pre-market and the post-market. Now there are gaps that occur and a gap is something that happens. It's the difference between the close and the open. So the skill set that I taught myself actually is that I can predict the direction the stock will go when it's gapping. Now you say, well, does everything gap every day? Pretty much, but not everything is a gap that is predictable or playable, okay? And some things are kind of tricky. Like the market today, the market could have gone either way today. But I did know one thing, that the market had to break early if it was gonna sell off today. And when it didn't do it, the market rallied, and theoretically, you could have gone long the market today. Now, I did not, but you could have, okay? So the skill set that you need is you have to predict if something's going higher or lower. It's really that simple. If you know something's going higher and you buy it and it moves higher, you'll make money. If you know something's going lower and you short it or buy a put, if you do an option, you will make money. So if a stock is at $10 and you know 
or can predict that it's going to go to nine, what would you do? You would short it and you can make a buck times however many shares you take. So a dollar times 5,000 shares would be what? $5,000. What if you have a stock and it's worth $20 and you know it's going to go to 22 or you predict it's going to go to 22? That's a $2 move. Again, you go long it, you buy the stock or you buy a call if you do an option and you can make $2, $2 times however many shares. If you have a thousand shares times two, $2, you make two grand, okay? It doesn't mean that every time you see something, will you predict it accurately, why? Because the market, the market itself, the very essence of the market is based on odds. And it's very similar, and I don't, I don't like to do this comparison in reference to the, the mindset, but it is about an odds thing where you're looking for high odds. There's high odds, and then there's low odds. Do you understand? So if you were a betting person, if you were a big gambler, and if you you like to go and you like to bet on sports games, you'd, you'd be looking at the odds. Now, again, this is not something that I do. I'm not a gambler. I don't, I don't bet on sports. In fact, I, I, don't, I don't even know enough about it to know if it's legal or not. Um, somebody here, maybe, maybe some of you men here can tell me if sport betting is legal. I don't know if it's legal in New York or New Jersey or even in, in, in Nevada. It's probably legal, but you would, you would find out the odds, okay? And you would bet on a certain team to win the game. And so trading is very much similar to that in the sense that you are looking at the odds. So I created a system. It's a point rating system where I look at 26 things on a daily chart, like Amazon, I'm just gonna go back to this because I have this one up here. And I look at it and I and I look at the odds and I say, okay, if this rates 20 points or more, that gives me high odds, high odds that the gap is gonna work, whether it's a bullish gap or a bearish gap, it depends on the day when I'm looking at it, if I'm looking to go long or short. I'm always looking to do it in the direction of the gap and I rate it accordingly, that's what I do. But I look at high odds and low odds. If it's under 20 points, if it's 17, 18, 19, it's a 50 50 chance of working or failing. And I usually don't do those. And anything under 17, I don't touch at all because I say low odds. So 20 points or more, I have a 26 point rating system. If you came and you wanted to learn from me, that's what you learn. That's what I teach in my class. And 20 or more means high odds. So this doesn't mean that every trade works, it means I take trades that have high odds. Some fail anyways. We're going to go over two day trades today. One worked and one failed, but guess what? Made money either way because the one that worked, worked pretty good. Worked a lot, okay? It's always about looking at odds. Now, I usually typically do one or two things a day, maybe three. If I'm over more than three trades a day and probably having a rough day, I typically like to do one or two things a day. And again, that's about the focus and that is about achieving the goal of just making money, not just trying to like go after it, after it, after it, after it, like you're being greedy, okay? Any questions here so far as I'm talking? I don't see any questions. And nobody answered my questions about sports betting. So I guess nobody knows, I'm surprised. My guess is the odds that the Eagles were gonna win yesterday was probably low odds unfortunately, even though I think they could have won. But I, don't, I guess we don't have any sport, men that bet sports here, or women, huh? I don't see any girls here tonight. All right, let's talk about preparation and success. So as I was stating earlier, I like to prepare in the morning, in the pre-market, before I trade. So I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. I might rate a gap at 6 a.m. when I roll out of bed at 5. Sometimes I relook at things then right before the open, but the preparation and the work that I do before I trade helps me make money into the day. I'm not taking any trades until after the open, okay? So I don't trade in the pre-market or post-market, but I do my homework. I do my pre-work then, okay? Any questions? This is a very quiet group. <laughs> Kathy, are you there? Somebody talk to me. Anyways, um, as I was saying, if you did not have a good year in 2019, you can have a good year in 2020. 
But what you don't want to do is take the negative energy, and if you had losses in 2019, you do not want to take that negative energy into 2020. You want to take positive energy into 2020, okay? So take the positive and move forward with the positive. That's the best advice I can give you too, all right? Don't be down on yourself if you made a lot of mistakes or had losses last year. Um, you know, you can, you can move forward and have a better year this year, but you have to be realistic about what it's going to take for that to happen. As I stated earlier, you can't do the same thing. If you're doing the same thing over and over and over, you're going to have the same results. And it's okay to have big goals for this year. If your goals are big, that's fine, okay? If your goals are big, you have to set a plan of action and figure out where how am I going to achieve these things six months from now, 12 months from now. That's okay. you got to look at it like a journey. Don't put too much pressure on yourself right away. I rate a gap based on the daily chart. I'm going to go back here to Amazon. So this is a gap. Stock closed here, gapped up. I have a rating system that I look at this gap. In this case here, this was Amazon. On this day, the stock opened around, I don't know, 1800 in the pre-market. And in the morning, you could have rated this if you'd done my class to determine if this was going to be a long or a short. This was a long, but the rating system tells you that and you prep in the pre-market. So if it's over 20 points, that tells me that guess what? High odds. I don't know what you mean by risky. I'm looking at odds. High odds are low odds. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think if you want to use the word risky, you're saying risky. Moser's saying risky. I think it's risky to take trades that are low odds. So I just don't do them. Other than that, I'm not sure what you mean by risky, but you can write it in the room what you mean. But I definitely, definitely, definitely think that anyone could do this if they're determined to do it, but it does take focus and it absolutely 100% takes a skill set. But if you can do it, you can work for yourself. And I, I do, and I work out of my apartment in Manhattan and it's great. And to be honest with you, I could live anywhere in the world. I could move to Spain if I wanted to tomorrow. So, or anywhere. So it, it just depends on the time zone. I still have to go within the U.S. market hours, but you do have a lot of freedom if you can do this and trade for yourself. So if that's your goal for 2020, set your sights on that and say six months from now, 12 months from now, this is what I want to do and this is where I want to be, okay? But there are many types of different traders. And as I was talking about earlier, I was talking about options and I'm also gonna to talk today about our day trades. You can be a day trader or you can, you can trade on margin or you can be a long-term trader or you can be an option trader and you can hold trades for options or you can be in and out of options like day trades, okay? Today, we're gonna focus on day trading, but I am gonna talk about a couple of options, but either way, you can do both, okay? Using my system, you can do day trades or options. You do need to know, though, what you want to do. So if you want to do both, fine. If you want to just day trade, fine. If you want to just do options, fine. But you have to know exactly what you're doing because the time frames or your targets for both of these types of trading, even though the system is the same, may vary and be different and your risk may be different. In other words, I think it's okay to risk more in options trades. Why? Because the cost is less typically for those. And also, you can hold overnight without the overnight risk in an option because all you'll lose is what you have at the cost of the contract, whereas I'm not doing equity trades overnight. Yes, I can trade in both directions to be profitable, and yes, you can too. Okay? So know what kind of trader you are. Know how much you want to risk per trade. Know what size of account you can afford to open. That's important too. Um, and, it, and, you, and you just really have to set the proper expectations for yourself. But again, January is a good time to do that. And before you even begin to risk any money in the market at all, you should have a strategy. And we're going to talk a little bit about mine, but I teach my full strategy in a class once a month. The class for January is this weekend. If you're interested, like I said, you can come to the trading room as a trial this week or email me if you're interested in learning my method. It's a class I teach. It's 16 hours. It's all day Saturday and Sunday, and I, it's about gaps, okay? It's the point system I've been talking to you about, and I do help mentor people. If you join my system, you can ask me questions, you can email me, you can call me, and you can join the trading room as well if you want to, 
But let's talk about the different types of traders you could become. If you want to be a day trader, an active option trader where you're in and out and in and out, then you need a margin account. So when you have a margin account, that's for day trading, okay? You can open up one at any broker. Brokers have varying margins, two to one, four to one, or even 10 to one in proprietary day trading accounts, but you must be flat by four o'clock Eastern time on all day trades. That means you're only taking positions in and off between 9.30 and four, okay? You're not outright buying the stock and holding it overnight, okay? So it's not like, oh, this Amazon is $1,800 a share and I need a million dollars in my account to trade it. No, you do not. You don't need the full cost of position. Margin of buying power means the broker is giving you a, a percentage, basically extra of your money to be able to take the position, but you must be flat by four. So the Golden Gap system is a system I do and can be traded with any size day trading account. It's just if you have a small account versus a large account, guess what? The number of contracts or the number of shares that you take will vary because it has to do with the size of your cash account. But the most important thing is to learn the system first. You should be practicing if you're new with 100 shares or one contract and or even on a demo. Okay, you can open up an account after the class. If you already have an account, you want to do the class this weekend, you can start trading small and make sure you've got charts set up and you need a level two, which any broker offers. Okay, I do not trade penny stocks. I think they're junk, they're crap. No institution, no fund is trading those with any weight. And so I'm looking in this, the, the philosophy behind my system is to look for institutional buying or selling and they're not trading crap and penny stocks are crap, okay? So we're doing real companies. Like you would know the actual names of the companies, Facebook, Amazon, Google, Boeing, you would know the things that we're doing or you could Google it and find out and say, oh, that makes widgets or whatever. They're, they're real companies, real things that we do. They have value, okay? They have value. To me, penny stocks have no really intrinsic value. So all stocks rebooted in the system have volume and are actively traded and the price range does vary for the options that we do and also for the day trades. But most stocks that we do for the day trades are in the mid range. And I'd even say with the options we're doing, you know, there are certain, certain ones that are expensive and pricey like the Amazons and Googles of the world. But most of the options that we do are, I would say, between $1 and maybe $5, which is, you know, pretty normal, okay, a cost per contract. But again, getting back to what we're talking about, about margin, just so you know, like if a stock costs $39 a share times 1,000 shares, it would cost you $39,000 to take the position in your day trading account. This is if you're doing equity trades, so you're going long, you want to buy 1,000 shares. Okay. Does that mean you need 39,000 cash? No, no, it doesn't. Because again, you're going to be trading as a day trade account, a margin. So if you have a four to one margin account, you would need what? $9,750. So you see the difference, but you still have a thousand shares. The buying power you would have would be 39,000. 10 to one margin account, you would only need 3,900. Again, this is a proprietary day trading account. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it. Now, what if you bought an option? Say this was a $39 stock, and I'm just making this up. There's no stock that I'm using here as an example. But if it costs a dollar, how much money would you need to have 1,000 shares? If you wanted to buy 1,000 shares, where well, you could buy 10 contracts would be basically 1,000 shares. Say they were calls, and they cost a buck. You'd need $1,000 cash. In this case here, you wouldn't need margin. This is if you're doing an option. So you'd only need a thousand cash for a thousand shares, which would be 10 contracts or 10 calls instead of 3,900 or 9,750. So whether you have a retail account or a cash account for options or a prop account, there's many, many ways that you can take a position in a stock without having a couple hundred thousand dollars. And I think a lot of people don't realize that because they say, oh my gosh, and especially, you know, if it's something where we're doing like 5,000 shares or whatever, you, you don't need, you know, half a million dollars to day trade because of something called margin, okay? Now, say you want to trade options with a cash account, no margin. You don't want to be in and out, in and out, in and out. 
You want to take them, you want to buy them, you want to hold them. I don't recommend that with every trade, but let's say that's that's all you got. You have a cash account. You can open up a cash account, I believe, an option account with two two grand, which is which is which is very reasonable for people. And I just don't suggest people trading with less than two thousand dollars in account or even twenty five hundred. But anyway, say you did that, you could do a trade like this. You would buy the puts. This is an option newsletter trade that I put out. Strikes was 3.30. This was last week or two weeks ago now. Gosh, <clears throat> this was, no, it was last week. No, it was two weeks ago. Um, this was the BA. It doesn't expire to this week. But I thought this was a good exit on this already. But anyways, you could have done this trade with a cash account. Even if you only had two grand in the account, even though the stock price cost $330 a share, because it's an option, okay? So you can trade options with a cash account, even ones that are stocks that are expensive stocks per share, like the Tesla, okay? Make sense? The goal is to make money. You can do it from home. So why do people find it so hard? Why do people find the market so volatile? Because they really, like I said, don't know what to do. I mean, they just don't know what to focus on. They, they, they don't know what to focus on. And as a result, they really don't have conviction. And if something doesn't go their way immediately, like taking a trade and making money, being up right away, they second guess themselves. And I got to tell you, sometimes I call trades specifically on my options newsletter. They may not be positive immediately. They may be negative until they go positive. But I look at the chart. And I'm reading the price action and I'm predicting that something's going to occur in the future that is going to create the movement and the volatility and the momentum in whatever direction we did it. Again, whether it's long or short. And I, I'm able to do this because I have conviction in what I do. I have conviction in myself. I have conviction in the, conviction in the system. And I have conviction in the knowledge. And this is where understanding a system and, and instead of just taking trades aimlessly, like really having a full on understanding of what someone's process is that they go through when they're calling trades is very, very important. Okay. So the trading room is something that you must take my class to join. The options letter you do not, there's no prerequisites for it, but the people that have better results on my options letter have done my class. So they understand the process of how I'm going through to choose the trades that I'm calling. Okay. George S. is asking, what's my success rate? I would say about 70 to 80% on any given month. So that's basically an average. Like I'd have to go back and calculate what it was for 2019 as far as a percentage. But year over year, as long as I've been trading, um, it's anywhere between 70 and 80%. So I would say to be conservative, if you took 10 trains, I'd figure three are going to be losers or two are going to be losers and seven or eight are going to be winners. So that's how you need to manage yourself. Make sense? So that's what we were talking about earlier. We are going to talk about one loser today um, that we did in the day trading room. Now, let's just go over very basically here what a gap is. Okay, if you don't know, I did say I said what I meant, but now I'm going to show you on a chart. This was one of the best calls I made in 2019. I've done a couple emails with best trade calls I've had for 2019. This was definitely one of them. This is McDonald's. Stock was in a strong, strong, strong uptrend the majority of 2019. Fabulous long. You wouldn't have been short it. You would have been crazy to short this stock at any point up until October. Now this was earnings. Stock closed here around 210, gap down to 206 fell like a brick actually this is one i called a day trade short in it we did it and i called the puts fell followed through okay because sue says love my honest is refreshing oh thank you i'll take all compliments <laughs> um oh honesty okay he, he loves my honesty are you a girl or a guy kasua i don't know how to pronounce that i'm not sure if i'm saying it right Anyways, this one here was a good one. Now, why was it a good one? One, it had a big bar. Two, we did it right out of the gate. We did it immediately out of the gate. So we caught this one near the top. Now, when you're looking to short something, if it's opening at the high and closing at the low, 
that's good, that's weak, okay? Similar to when you're buying something and it's opening at the low, like the market did today, and, you're, and it closes at the high, like the market did today, that's good if you're long. Again, I did not go long the market today, but I'm giving you an example. So this was a good one because it closed at the low and had a big bar and we got it early, okay? So anyways, this is a gap. Stock close here, gap down. So this is four o'clock Eastern time. This is 9.30 a.m. in the morning. But I saw this before 9.30 a.m. So that's the ticket. So I called the trades in the morning pre-market. Now I'm not predicting this. Like at 3.30 in the afternoon yesterday, or whatever day this was, I didn't know this was gonna do this. That's not what I'm doing. I'm waiting, I'm scanning, I'm looking, and then boom, I see it. And I see that it's down, whatever time this was. So this could have happened in the morning at 7 a.m. or it could have happened the night before. I forget when this uh, reported. But again, I'm not predicting that this is going to gap I'm, I'm predicting that this is going to go down after I see the gap or up. But in this case here, this was a one that went down. Make sense? Now, this was another one here. This closed here, this gap down. We did this one too. It was a follow through continuation. Not as big of a move, but this was profit. And I had 100% conviction in this one too. So this, you see the move here, we're talking about momentum. We're talking about high odds. This was high odds, number one, that it was lower, and number two, that the move was going to be substantial. I mean, to say that, you know, I have dream targets that I save for things. I do not hold every trade to a dream target. Google today is a good example. We'll go over that chart today if we have time. But the reality is that, I mean, 190 was really the dream target. And when this dropped down here to 191, that was a great trade. But look where it went. Not only did it go to 190, it broke 190, and low in here was like 187 and change. So you will have this. But again, this is the idea of playing momentum and volatility and having the volatility work in your favor because this was a good move down. This was an institutional sell-off, and that's what I'm predicting. Once this goes, what are you going to do? You're chasing it two, three days in. The idea is to get it like we did at the top in the short or immediately, as quick as we can, not before, we wait, wait for the gap, rate it, then boom, strike, okay? But in the morning when we're day trading, I'm usually only in for the first half an hour, hour of a day, sometimes we're in out of trades in minutes. The options, I'm in longer, but I am mostly looking to get into them in the first hour of the day, okay? So either way, there's really no overnight risk for the day trading because I'm flat by the end of the day. And options, the risk is only, like people say, well, what's your stop? The stop is the position size. So if something costs a dollar and you want to get 10 contracts, how much, what's your stop? A thousand bucks, that's it. So you can't lose more than a thousand dollars no matter what happens, even if it goes against you overnight, okay? It's not like a swing trade. So you're, you're in control of your money in the sense that during the day trades, we have stops. I put it a hard stop, it's a limit, limit order. And we're in and we're out, like I said, between 9, 30, 4, but usually in the morning. The options, I'm out when I'm up. And in this type of environment, I'm typically not holding, not holding that long if I'm up a good amount. You say, well, what's a good amount? 50% to 100% is a good amount. But even still, okay, there will be trades um, that you just, that like McDonald's, that just go way more than 100% on that one particular day. And as a result, you'll be in in them. You can't force things to go bigger than you want. You just can't do that. And sometimes when you're looking for more for something and you're trying to force it, it's just not going to go. You have to make sure that you take profits when you're up because there will be trades, as I answered George's question earlier, that simply do not work. So what you don't want to do is be in a trade, be positive in a trade, be up in a trade, and then knock it out. Whether it's a day trade or an options trade, you don't want to be a piggy about it, okay? Then there will be ones that are big, but they will just kind of like fall into your lap. You won't have to overthink them. But the returns with trading, when you look at what you could do with your money, okay, you could go out to a bank and right now you could deposit your money in a bank. In a certificate of deposit, I think the last thing I walked by somewhere last week in the city 
was like 1.75 for a certificate for a CD for like five years. It was something so ridiculous that I literally like stood outside and laughed and laughed and kept walking. Like, I mean, it's when you think, well, if you have money and you want to invest it long term in the marketing retirement, fine. That's completely different. You have it in an IRA or a 401k or whatever. But if you have money that you want to be actively involved with working that and trying to make it more cash that you want available, not something locked in, like in a like in a 401k, and you want to make it more. You want to take the money that you have and you want it to be bigger. It's there's really if you put it in a bank, you just can't earn that much. Okay, so when you look at the returns as far as percentages with trading, it can be very lucrative. And it doesn't matter if it's return on investment for options, which is a term for that, or risk to reward, which is the day trading term, when you're turning it over. And the difference is because one is margin and one is just the cost of it. But again, this is not long-term investing. You're chunking it out. You put the money in, you make it work, you take it. You put the money in, you're up, and then you take it. You take it, you book it. You take it, you book it. You take it, you book it. That's how you, you it's like you're turning your money around, all right? Does that make sense? But so day trading isn't investing. You can look at a chart and use my system and make long-term predictions. I'm good at doing that. But that's not really what we're doing actively in the day trade room. And that's not really how I'm calling the options anyways. And I find that people really are not interested in very long-term option calls because their money is tied up in the whole time that they're in them anyways. And the longer trades I call out for the options newsletter, you're paying up for the price of that for as long as out as it is, okay? You have to look at it like you're playing the momentum and you're taking the money out in the big moves, the fast moves, okay? So if you've got this buy and hold mentality, you really don't have an active day trading mentality and you have to kind of adjust that. Like I've seen people, people have come to me and they're, they're in that buy and hold mentality and you really need to adjust that. So set your goals, we we're talking about this earlier, how much do you want to make per day? How much do you want to make per week? I find it's better to look at it week over week or month over month and year over year because some days you will not have any trades. There won't be any gaps. Some days we may take a loss. So I would say look at the week, set your goals, look at the month, and then look at the year and have, and have or just start with the year and then back it up. And that will help you, okay? Because you can still have a positive week. Say you have one lost day three days you make money and one day you don't do anything you could still be up for the week you could still have a very good week okay but ultimately is it about having more winners than losers okay and luckily the winners that we have are are typically big winners now let's look at ba so this was a day trade today we were not aggressive in this does everyone see the chart it's a one minute chart in boeing <laughs> now this clock here is in front of the previous day's close, but this was four o'clock on Friday. Stock gap down this morning, open here. Now, I had called puts last week on Friday. It was a good trade. The stock gap down into the number. I called the 330 puts again, same expiration date, another time. Friday, I called them. That was aggressive, and it gapped down into it past the strike. That was a good call. I saw it would follow through lower on Monday. It did. Anyway, stock dropped. We did not do anything here, rallied. Boom. Then we did the day trade short and it sold off. Okay. So we shorted Boeing as a day trade and got the drop. Okay. Now you could have held this in here. I was expecting this to continue lower. It didn't. So kind of had a late exit on this here. I didn't get out here at the low. I was expecting it to go lower. So I gave some back waiting for a bigger move until I got out. But anyways, whether you got out here, here, here. This was a good move. So entry in this, this is a day trade. And again, I called this live in the trading room. 321.90, 3,000 shares. This is an advanced trader position. Why? Because the risk is 22.50. I always put a stop. Stop was 330.65. Exit, like I said, was 328.55, but you could have made another 50 cents plus in this. This did go down to 328. Profit was 4,050. This was a nice trade. Everyone see this? This is a one minute chart today of Boeing. So this stock got sold off. We shorted it, we did it, boom, got the drop, okay? We were not aggressive on this though, which turned out to be in our favor. So someone was asking earlier, does every trade work? No, 
It is about odds. <clears throat> I've been reading Boeing lower. Uh, my expectation was that it would gap down Monday. The trade I called Friday was late, late in the day, and I was right. My expectation turned out to be correct. I predicted Boeing would drop, and it did. It dropped into the gap, and then it fell and had some follow through this morning, which is again where we're looking to be in. But we did do another trade today that failed. So this is the this was the loser. So let's take a look at this. This is calm. Now this was an earnings gap. Again, you can't see the clocks up here. This was closed up here the night before. 42.50 and change, boom. Open in the morning here around 38. Kind of a decent sized gap down. This was weak. I didn't even look at the, how this closed, honestly. We were aggressive on this, dropped, bounced, boom. We got stopped out here in this taily thing. So this was a short that we got stopped in. This was a loser. So this entry was 37.20. Shares 2,000. Stop was 38.45. Risk was 18.75. Exit 38.45. This was a, this lost 18.75. So we'll go back. This is where we did it, and this is where we got stopped. Okay. So again, not every trade works. So we did two things. Now, I will say this. If this had fallen off a planet, I was looking for this to go to 36. I didn't think that was a dream target. This low in here was 37. If we had gotten this down, which we didn't, then I probably would not have done BA today. But anyways, we got stopped in this, and then I went over to the BA, and we did it. But anyways, this, for whatever reason, didn't fall through lower today. But I do like this lower. So... See how you can do one winner and one loser, and you can still have a profitable day. So in this case, actually, the success rate today of these two trains was what? Was 50%. 50% and still $2,100 in profits. That's not half bad. And again, it's the, it's the concept and the philosophy that I'm looking for momentum. When you have momentum and volatility in stocks, they have big moves. And as an active trader, that's how you make money, trading big moves. And that's one of the reasons also that I don't do penny stocks, that I don't do cheap stocks. They don't have big moves. You have to take an obscene amount of share quantity to trade those stocks to make any, to make thousands of, to make four grand or any amount of money. And it's way, talk about risky. Someone said risky, way too risky. Okay. So anyways, I look at it, and you can look at this too, like, you know, your goal could be to capture 50 cents, a dollar, you know, we got more than that in the BA, but I'm typically trying to look for a buck, okay? And you can even do this with options now, not with some of the high flyers, not with trades like Google and Amazon or whatever, but you could look at this like this in your mind for the move of that you're trying to get for taking profits of the stock. And I mean the stock, the move, the stock's making in the chart, not necessarily option chain, okay? But trading is a good job. You can work for yourself. You can work from home. And like I said, it's a process. I've been doing this now for 12 years. I've had the business for, I guess, eight. And, you know, I'm only striving to try to do better. I'm a perfectionist. That's one of the reasons that I get up early in the morning um, I have a type A personality and I just, you know, I, I'm a high achiever. It, you don't have to be like me, okay? But I will say this, trading is something that so many people want to do it. So many people want to do it. And there's so much money you can make in the market. If you do not have a, a personality where you're a high achiever, then the five minutes or 10 minutes or one hour or three hours a day that you were going to spend with the market, you and the market alone, the two of you together, and you're going to risk your money with taking trades, okay? You, you do kind of have to have that mindset, even if it's not part of your blood like it is part of mine, you have to have that mindset while you're doing it. It doesn't have to be you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. But so many people want to be successful at this, and a lot of people fail, that if you want to win, if you want to take money out of the market, you kind of have to have that go-getter mentality in the moment that you're trading, whatever that period of time is, okay? Like, you have to switch, the, switch it on. In that one hour that you're trading, you turn the button on, boom, and, you, and you're on for that one hour. I only say I can be perfect, 
for one hour a day and I feel like I can. Now some days I'm up and I'm tired or I'm sick, but for the most part, when I get up in the morning, I say I can be perfect into the open, which is the most important time, which is when I'm making the decisions, the decisions are critical, critical. Today's a good example. Actually, I'm gonna pull up the market here before I finish this lecture because I wanna show you something here since I brought this up. <clears throat> Here, does everyone see the chart? This is a spy. There. Hello, is anyone alive? Okay, this is the spy. Boom, 9.30, that's the open right there. As soon as I saw that, I knew what was gonna happen. But, and in that moment, it was a critical moment because I knew that this could not, this might not have looked like that. Like, what do I mean? The market gap down, actually, let me put on the stuff from the morning. I'm just gonna put it up. This is this morning. Actually, you can see there 4 a.m. So that's this morning. I forget what time I woke up today. I didn't get up crazy early. It was a little bit slept in. First day back. This is all in the morning, 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 morning. So I saw all of this and I'm like, hmm, this is interesting here. It's a little tricky. So this is what I was looking at. So this is that where I'm determining what to do. And then I watched this. So I did not call any puts in the market this morning. But this here is the open. Let's take it all off here. That is 9.30, 60 seconds into the open that I saw what the market was gonna do. And then, so there was a possibility, what I'm saying is, there was a possibility the market could have done something different than this. And we would have known, or you would have known if you were in the trading with me, or if you, if you knew what I knew, you would have seen it in the moment. Instead, this occurred. So then when this occurred, I knew then we were lower. I mean, that we were higher and we weren't lower. So I didn't call any shorts in the market. So, but this, this may not have happened is what I'm saying. This might have done something different here. Instead, it flipped, dropped, broke, flipped, did a tail. Again, this is all in 60 seconds. And then where we went, we took off. So the market's at the low of the day into the open. That's very bullish. Does everyone see that? I forget if I made what point I was trying to make now, but um, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. I think I made my point. Um, anyways, it's a new year. It's 2020 and you have to think about what you're going to do differently because if you're not seeing the results that, you know, in 2019 that you wanted, then you've got to do something different. And I think a lot of times people blame themselves. They say, oh, I, my discipline or my this or my money management or and people beat themselves up. They're terrible. Traders are terrible beating themselves up, feeling awful and guilty and horrible and losing money. And, and they won't stop doing the same strategy that they've been doing that doesn't work. <laughs> so, I mean, it may not be you. You may be absolutely fabulous, but what you're doing sucks and it's not going to work no matter how many years you do it. So you really have to be honest with yourself. Again, I have this, I have an intuition and I'm very honest with myself. I can look in the mirror and know when I made a mistake. But, but you know, you have to be in that centered place where you say, wait a minute, is it me or is this thing that I've been doing really not working, okay? Because there are many, many people out there that are attempting to trade the market with failed systems and failed strategies. And, and so you have, that's an important critical piece of it. You have to have the strategy that has to be part of it. Yes, you need good money management. Yes, you have to take profits when you're up. Yes, you can't risk more than you can afford to lose. You can't have a $2,000 account and risk all your money in one trade, okay? But the fact is that those things are really just common sense. The strategy itself is the critical component that many people are missing, and yet they continue to do the same thing that they've been doing the, strategically that tells them they should go long here or short here. Like there were people that shorted the market Friday. It's one of the reasons and I'm not saying the only reason, but one of the reasons why we're probably gonna flip now over the high this week 
you know? Um, I don't know what you mean by advice. I have an options newsletter and I teach a gap options course. Uh, the gap options course is January 16th. It's $2,500 and includes one month of the gap options newsletter. The gap options newsletter is $59.99 a year for 12 months. You can ask me anything you want in, in the class or in the newsletter if you become a subscriber, but if you have a specific question about something, I can look at it now. I don't know if, what you mean by advice though. Like I'm not going to manage people's specific accounts. I'm not a licensed professional, but if you want to learn what I know, the system is in the Golden Gap course, but the Gap Options class is a half day course, which will help teach you a lot of things about managing options that are, that are critical. Eric, I just saw you sign in. Happy New Year. You're late. Anyways, let's talk about Google. So this was a crazy one. I don't, I don't know if anybody stayed with this train. I called Google. In fact, let me just call, let me, let me look. I think I did call this in the pre-market in the class here. I didn't get any emails back from anyone today. So I'm kind of wondering if nobody held this. Um, I, I hope somebody did though. No, I called it after the open. Here, here's this. I called this trade. This was insane. I, I, I'll put. I'll stick this in some email. Um, this here. I called this 9:53. It was on Thursday. I called the 1360 Googles expiring Friday. Does everyone see that? And it, and it ran up the day I called it. So I, I thought it was a good exit. <laughs> I thought it was a great exit. Um, made a new high. Then Friday we got down, stock rallied anyways, made another new high. Again, which this was not predictable. Anyways, this was predictable. It was a good call. Look where it went. This was totally, totally insane. And I didn't hear back from anybody. So I don't know if anybody held it. But the point is that this movement was a good trade. And I think a great exit on a Thursday. Again, partial week last week, made new highs. But this happened today and was totally insane. And I wish this had happened there. <laughs> but the point is that sometimes I'll call a trade like on a day like this and it will do that. And then you don't have to think about what to do. But I really feel like this was a good exit here. But the reality is anybody that held this, look where it went. It, it almost got to 1400 so it went over $40 to the strike. And I really didn't look at the price of this then today because I was already out of it. So I thought this was a good exit. But there will be trains that you don't have to think that do this on the day. This was a nice call. So anyways, this is a good example though because I had the call of focusing on the gap itself and just playing the momentum because the gap rated well here. Now this was a bullish gap. Okay. So this was a long, um, how often does the options newsletter come out and how does that work for day trading options? The option newsletter comes out whenever I see good trades. The majority of the trades I do send in the morning, either pre-market or between 9:30 and 10 AM, but I will occasionally send a trade in the afternoon. Like I did call BA Friday afternoon. It gapped down Monday morning, but I don't do that every day. And some days I may not call any trade at all. Last week on Thursday, I think I called seven, eight, nine trades. I don't know. I called a ton of trades on Thursday. They all worked. I will do that too. So I may not call any trades one day and then one day I'll call like 10. So it's, you know, it is what it is. I can't predict how many good gaps we're going to get. I call them when I see them. That's all that I can say. Um, but if you want to do them as day trades, fine. But know that I might call one like the BA where you, you wouldn't have gotten out of that Friday. You would have held it into the following day. You wouldn't have done that as a day trade. It would have been a hold. Unless you want to just kill everyone into the close if they don't go that day. But I wouldn't recommend that. And this might have not gone right away. But it did. Okay. 
just wish that was there. <laughs> this was crazy. Good sign, though. Good sign of strength in the stock in the market. So I get this question a lot here. Do I have gaps all year? Yes. Do we have more gaps in earnings season, though? Yes. When does earnings season start? I already looked it up because everyone's been bugging me. This week here. So the market's closed on the 20th Martin Luther King Day, federal holiday. So this week here is when we start to get lots. So we'll have gaps this week. Here we are. Today is the 6th. There are gaps this week, too. But then earnings season starts this week, two weeks from now, and we will have a lot more. And what do I mean? I mean, there could be like 100 earnings on the day. So lots to do. Doesn't mean I'm doing more than one or two things in the day trade room, but there will be multi a lot of options I'll call. Again, it's up to you if you want to do them all. I mean, if it depends the size of your account, you may not want to do five trades in one day. I don't know. But I typically call them in waves. For example, and Eric knows this from being in the letter, Thursday, I called all calls and they all worked. So if I see something like I might call things in a wave, a wave of puts or a wave of calls, the cost of the Gap Options newsletter is $59.99 a year. The cost of the Gap Options course is $2,500 and includes one month of the letter free, which is a good, a good enough time period for you to see if you are in sync with the letters, if you're making money, if you're doing, if you're doing it. But the cost for the year is, is uh, $59.99, six grand, which is well worth it. Um, any other questions? So I was doing a thing with top trades of the year 2019. I'm going to go over Tesla. I did call a trade in this today. It was late in the day. I missed this last week. I was off. And then I really just wanted to take a break, even though I ended up doing a little bit of work every day, which was annoying. I really need a vacation this year. But I missed this call on the one day. I saw it late. I was on radio, on Sirius Radio, and they asked me about it. I saw it, but I figured it was way too late to do it. And I'm glad I didn't call it late because the stock fell into the close. This is Friday. Then today, I saw it. I called it. This is already up. I see some of you with Milton here. I don't know if you did this. I think, Milton, you're in the letter. This I called another trade in this today. It was late, but I called it, and it's already up. So this was one of the top ones from 2019. This is back in October. This is the trade I called today. But anyways, this is one that really had a lot of momentum back in October. But the momentum has followed through into 2020, which is where we are right now. So I called calls in this. Anyways, the Tesla calls I called back in October was a 305s. It was this day. So I called the trade here, and here's where it had the pop. So again, the big move was the second day. So here was the day, and then here's the big move. It was a huge trade. And again, you would have gotten out of this here. While this had some follow through here, you have to take your profits. Because I called it out to the first, so you would have given back a lot of profits if you held it into the following week. This was a beautiful move. Eric, I don't know, did you do this Tesla? Were you in the letter then? I don't know. Anyways, I called this one then today. In fact, let's see where this closed today because I really was busy then I didn't look exactly at the close. <laughs> yep, this is probably gonna get up tomorrow morning. This is a nice call. Now this was a little pricey. This wasn't a cheaper. I called the 450 calls and the 455 calls expiring this week in Tesla. I called it late, but it was before it was hit over the number of the strike and it ran right up. This close at the high, this is higher. In fact, let's look at the. This is gapping up tonight. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised if this gaps up tomorrow morning over the high. 454. So this was a late call today. But early enough to get it in, it was around 3-ish, a little bit before, and it went poop. So again, this is a long. Eric, you didn't do the Tesla? Eric's going to run out and do Tesla now tomorrow. Um, anyways, this was this one. Again, I'm going over best trades from 2019. This was the one from October that ran up the secondary day. It was a massive trade. 
But Dad called it. It was just a little bar. Cost was $5, which isn't crazy, but it had a big move. Again, advanced trader risk, $7,500 risk, exit 26, you could have made $31,500. It's taking it one day, getting out of it the next. Taking it one day, exiting the next. But either way, whatever your risk is, was 238% return on investment. So this one here, this is a lower risk, $2,500. You still could have made over 10 grand. And $500 risk, $2,100. Again, this is not every trade that I call. Do I know what the return on investment will be for the Tesla that I called today? No, I don't know. I think it's going to gap up tomorrow. It's going to be up more than tomorrow into the gap up. It could gap up over the strike of 455. And then if it does, it's going to be really nice. I don't know until the open. I don't know until the morning. You're scared of Tesla? Why? The best way to do Tesla, Eric, is really as an option. You're scared of it because you don't want to do it as a day trade. And I get that. This is wild. This is very expensive to trade on margin. You're scared because of doing it as a day trade. But as an option, you shouldn't be scared of this. You pay the cost. If it costs $5, you get one contract. That's 500 bucks. You're not scared of doing it as a... As a as a um, as an option, are you? Eric, I'm talking to you. Anyways, I see it's it's after 5:30. I'm just gonna try to finish up here. But Eric, answer my question. Are you scared of doing that as an option? Because you shouldn't be. Um. Anyways, this it's a great way to look at trades and look at the market. I'm telling you, this this gap stuff that I'm doing works. And you really have to have a high level of accuracy and have some big winners too to support yourself doing this because you will have losses. Like I said, the calm didn't work today. So the winners have to pay for the losses and then you still have to come out way ahead. So you've got to have good skills to do that. But for me, it's the focus. It's the open. Again, you can work from home. It's just what are you willing to do to get there? But I told you, the focus has to be there when you're trading. And you've got to get your game on for 2020. You've got plenty of time to do it. Plenty of time to achieve your goals. you got the entire year. Start fresh. You have to just, you have to want it. And you have to look at this as something you're, you're doing. You're in a mindset where you're, you're moving forward. And you're just, you're not going to have this, this negative thought process anymore. I call it amnesia. Uh, go into this year and have amnesia from all the things that happened to you in 2019. Forget them. Forget the losses, forget the mistakes that you made, or even in 2018. Take the energy right now that you have and move forward in a positive direction that you can do it. Because I'm telling you, you can do it. I've taught people how to trade. People are making money with me. The question is, you know, are, are you, are you going to do it? You know, are you going to keep doing the same thing you've been doing? No, calm didn't work, Eric. You can look at the chart. I know you signed in late. Calm was a, a short and we got stopped. I would say a good rule of thumb for the options trades is, again, 50% to 100%. But if you have one like the Tesla from last October, like that example I just showed, that was an easy one. You wouldn't have gotten out of that the day I called it. It didn't move enough. I, you got to give the trades a chance to work, okay? You don't want to get out of something that just moves a little bit. Like Tesla was up today into the close, but, I mean, why would you get out? I just called it. My expectation is that it's going to move higher. Could go to 460. That's not even a dream target. Dream target in Tesla is 475. I don't, I don't know if it's going to get there, and I'm not saying I'm going to hold it to there. I don't know. I don't know where it's going to be tomorrow morning, but I'll know more when I see it in the morning. Okay? Anyways, my system teaches you how to measure the gap and rate it based on the daily chart. So I'm looking for high probability. High odds, like I was talking about, of directional bias for the entire day. Big move in the day and early confirmation of the bias for the move between 9.30 and 10. And precise entries with follow-through and a good risk-to-reward potential. So think of it like you're chunking it out. Think about the long-term picture. Don't think about the money that you're spending up front to learn the class or even to pay for the letter for the year. Think about this as long-term. You're going to achieve your goals and how you're going to do that. Okay? And you're learning something new. Actually, here was BA. I put this chart in here again. 
Um, this is the day chart of BA. Here was the drop off from that first 3.30 call. This, or we already talked about this one. I didn't put the numbers in here. So this is one that I just want to get out into the end of the year. So this was an exit into the end of 2019. This is the one I called the 26. Cost was 575, exit was nine, profit 3,900. So this was a 56% return on investment. This was the one, go back to the chart here, the 26. Where's the 26? Here, boom, dropped into the end of the year. Do, do. I still like that stock lower. That pushed back today, but I still think it's lower. Anyways, the money comes easy when you know what to do and you don't get all crazy about losses because you understand that some trades won't work and you review and you say, okay, well, did I make a mistake with this? No, no, I didn't. So you can't beat yourself up if you didn't make a mistake. All right. But if you're doing a system that doesn't work, you're never going to make money consistently. And, and, and I, I can't, I can't believe how many people I talk to that, that how much money they lose year over year and they just don't change what they're doing. So You've got to change what you're doing if you're not making money. It's critical. You'll, you'll just continue to lose. At a certain point, you won't be able to keep trading if you're losing money at one year, two years, three years, four years, five. And it's a waste of your time, okay? So you can do it, but you have to have, I think, a good mentor. I try to help people, and the system is the most important thing. So the Golden Gap system is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. So it's one strategy. That's really all you need to be successful in the market. That is all I use, and I'm successful. So I can look at it for long-term trends. I can look at it for the short day trades or the in-between period, like the options. But I will tell you that it's reading the institutional buying or the institutional selling. Today in the market is a good example of institutional buying because it came in the market right out of the gate and swept the market up. And like I said, we're probably going to make new highs this week. So that's buying. That's big money. That's what institutional money is. And when you're trading on the right side of that, it is easy to make money. you got to know how to read it. And the key is to read it to get in the trade before it happens. Okay. But you don't need a general overall broad based view of money of, of the market to make money. And that's interesting, like I'm thinking about this now. People shorted the market and were calling the top after a Thursday. Why? There was no, yeah, see, do you see this? This doesn't make any sense at all. I know we're really going late here, Kathy. I'm sorry. If you've got to go, you've got to go. I, 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 I'm not finished here because I'm just, I'm just thinking of this right now. Is everyone listening to me? Like, again, I got 100 emails this weekend about the market made a top. This is way before, way before today's trading, way before the gap down, way before anything. But like there was no reason, no reason at all for anyone to think that that was a top whatsoever at all. Does everyone see this? This is a chart of the SPY. Again, I'm looking at the SPY. This was Thursday into Friday. I had a million, a million emails. Because again, I go to webinars with other 10 other presenters and they throw me on their list. And I just see what all the people are saying. I go, duh, 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 duh. but anyways, here, this is this. Look at that. Why would you think that that was a top? Again, I don't pick tops or bottoms, but there was there's no institutional selling that came into the market there from Thursday to Friday. The bar wasn't even red. Today, you can see it even more evidently here. Now, I'm not saying we're never lower again. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying we're going to rally every day this week. Not, I'm not saying that whatsoever. Something could happen between tonight and tomorrow. We got down tomorrow. I'm not on the market here today, but I'm just saying that we're talking about control, the control. The control was never flipped to the bears. And a million people were calling a top in the market. You see how dumb that is to think like that. So when you understand what to look for, you, you will become profitable because you will, you will know, because you will be on the side of the people that are controlling the world. And those are the people that have a lot of money. <laughs> And you basically, and when I talk about a lot of money, I talk about a lot of money. It's so funny. Like I was on, I was on Fox like a week ago and everyone's talking about Bloomberg, 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 because he's running. And, um, I, I, I didn't know what he was worth. And I Googled it. Does anyone know of Michael Bloomberg's worth without Googling it? I was shocked, shocked, like fell off my chair, shocked. Does anyone know? Guess, somebody guess. No, 
No one wants to guess. Everyone's asleep. <laughs> 56 billion. 56 billion. That's a B. Not an M. That's a B. 56 billion dollars. Fifty-six billion. Steven said forty billion. He was close. T said fifty billion. He was close too. I had no idea he was worth that much. I knew he was a billionaire. Obviously, I would I would have never guessed fifty some billion. But that's what I'm talking about. About money. About institutional money. About lots and lots of money. Do you know what I mean? No, ten million isn't even close. And the difference between 1 million and 1 billion is a lot. The difference between 100 million and 1 billion is a lot. So to say 50 billion plus, it's a lot. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a lot. So anyways, you've got to learn how to read institutional money and price patterns. And I know how to do it in gaps. And again, this is how I'm able to make the predictions of how something's going to move. So if you have time to trade between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern time, if this fits your schedule, then you can do my strategy. Because like I said, many of the trades I'm calling before the open in the pre-market are into the open in the first hour of the day. For the day trades, we're in and out quick. You can do this from home or if you're at work from your computer. And if this is really what you want to do for a career, then you got to get on point. And Eric, I'm talking to you. You've been talking about it, talking about it, back and forth, back and forth for two, three years. You've got to get serious about it. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. Class is January 11th and 12th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Then I'm doing a trends class on the 14th, which is Tuesday, 11 to 2. So the combo tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Okay, if you want to just pay for the Golden Gap Course alone, it's $64.99 US dollars. It's nine to five. Again, you have to email me if you want to sign up. Now, I'm doing a special for this whole entire week through Friday. If you want to sign up for the combo, I'm giving the options newsletter free to the end of the year. This is a great deal because the letter is normally $59.99. So the letter itself is normally six grand for the year. So you're getting almost the whole year. Today is only the six. You will learn the system, which is important. You would take the class, the Golden Gap course, the trends course, and then you have the options newsletter till the end of the year. Okay. I'm offering this for this class this weekend ends on Friday. If you're interested in this, email me. If you're interested in trial for the trading room this week, email me. 2020 is here. No excuses, people. No excuses. The time is now for you to be successful. <laughs> Eric. Listen, email me if you have any questions. Thank you so much for staying later. Any last minute questions here before we go? No critical data this week. No impeachment things this week. No China trade things this week. The market's going to do whatever it wants this week. So we will see. Okay. We will see. We'll take it day by day. That's all we can do. Thank you, everyone. Here's my email. It's the Melissa at the stock swish is the best one. Okay. Good to see you, Eric. Good to see you, Milton. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Again, email me if you have any questions. Email me if you want to trial for the room. And email me if you're interested in the class special. This is a great deal. Because the letter, like I said, is normally six grand for the whole year. This way you'll get the options, trades, and you will learn the system. Thank you for staying, Kathy. I appreciate it. Very good. Have a good night, everyone.